minutes here. And folks, it's one o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and jump in and get started. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be talking about quality control as a new year resolution. It is January. It is not too late to start making quality control a component of every single visit in your shop. I know that everyone has a little bit of a quality control thing that they sort of do every time, sort of. We want to get a little more deliberate about these things. And this is a conversation that Chris and I have had before. We teach a class on this that can go well over three hours. Uh, this is going to be a lot shorter, a little more focused, and we get the privilege of being able to go in tool in this sort of a presentation in Autoflow. And as you say, Chris, the emperor wears no clothes, right? So we're going to look at Golden Rule Auto Care as an example. We're going to look at Golden Rule Auto Care, Craig. And I just want to reemphasize the importance of quality control, Craig. I, I was thinking about this as we were working up to this webinar, and it's something as simple as when you go through a drive through at your favorite fast food place, whether that be Chick-fil-A, God's Chicken, or Whataburger, or whatever that is your choice, Taco Bell. And Craig, you get your bag, and you're in a rush. So instead of checking your food, which you know you should do right then and there, you yeah. don't. You drive off. <laughs> you're 10 minutes down the road, and your fries are missing. And you are now pissed off. You're now hungry and pissed off. And you're not going to go back 10 minutes to go to the fast food place to get your fry. How much of an inconvenience is that when it's something like fast food, Craig? Yeah. But how much more of it is an inconvenience to your customer when they pick up their car, assuming that it's in better condition than it came in than it did when it left? So something as simple as we get pissed off at the fast food place. But we believe in our own auto repair shops that we shouldn't have some sort of practice that we follow every time for every that quality time. control break. It's interesting how we think sometimes. It is. And the thing is, is we know that there's, there's a key part of this part of the uh, quality control should be a part of the visit. We know this is a relationship business and we know that it breaks relationships when things go wrong. That trust is nullified. So we're talking quality control today, folks, but this there's, there's a broader conversation. I did this actually with Jeremy Glasgow. It was probably about... A year and a half ago, we did a conversation on a post, uh, like finalized checklist that you do for every visit during the pickup. This is a relic from that conversation. And you can tell it's a relic because it still says auto text me on it. <laughs> but this was a key piece. But you're going to notice that uh, we do quality control checks as, as a simple component of this uh, process. We're going to inspect the vehicle for elements on things. And that's a core part of this. Now, Chris is talking about some things that, in fast food, we know the things that can go wrong. You know they do too. Cold food, missing food, things wrong, wrong food, wrong bag. All that stuff has happened probably every single one of us. If it happens commonly, are you the kind of customer that's going to go and leave a bad review or do you quietly go away? I'm the guy well, that I think after a while, Craig, I, I leave a bad review and I stop frequenting the place. I, I, it's just our human nature because we feel that after a while, you just can't get it right. And, and oh, yeah. how many other people are you probably screwing in the same fashion? And Craig, what about the, the missing the fork whenever you have like something that you need a fork to eat with and yeah. they don't put the silverware in your, yeah. of course, we're talking about auto repair, but in your chart right here, these are all the things that you don't realize that we do to customers. That just drives them insane. And we have to apologize profusely, but all it takes is a process, a little bit of extra care for us to make sure that that customer leaves in better condition. Extra care means extra time. And that is why we asked this for the poll for this conversation. How often do you feel you're too busy to do quality control inspections? Now, I did not expect always to have that many answers. And I saw the names on some of the people that said always, and thank you for your honesty. And I'm shocked. <laughs> some of you are awesome operators that do great work and you always feel too busy to do quality control. Now, again, this is a Craig science. Uh, I put the word feel in there. You might feel too busy, but you do it anyway. <laughs> and maybe that's the case for a lot of you here. Hopefully chime in on chat. If that's the case, please uh, let me know. I'll fill my Craig, there's some important statistic I always like to throw out there when it comes to quality control. It's 
keeping an existing customer versus buying a new customer. We all know this, the quote a long time ago is seven times more expensive to bring in a new customer. Now I think it's 29 times more expensive with social media and the inundation of everything that's projected to a customer. To get them to walk through the door costs you a lot of money. So is it really costing you that much to go out, to walk around the car, start it up, make sure all the lights are, are off, make sure this oil change sticker, make sure the tools are gone, just do a quick check over the work. Like, is that really costing you or is it costing you less to keep that existing customer versus having to replace that customer with a new one because of these incidents that eventually they go, you know what, I'm out. Yeah. And this is a great point that you're making here too, because that cost, it's it's not, it's a hidden cost. It's not one that we get to see because it's not there. I asked the question as well in the registration for this webinar, what you estimate, our audience, what you estimate the average lifetime value is for a client and the answers were all over the place. The answers were absolutely everywhere on this point. I think it's kind of interesting to go and pull, uh, we'll have a, a point on this here in a moment, but we saw everywhere from $5,000, $3,000, some people were estimating, all the way up to a million dollars. And everywhere in between, from 10 k to 100 k all over the place. Some of you just admittedly don't know. And uh, some of you say you're a 501c3, uh, so this is unable to be answered. Uh, so hey, that's all right too. Uh, <laughs> but I like the I like the million dollar answer, Craig. That's a that's a mighty yeah. busy shop. I like it that. Is. Yeah, uh, there's one with more zeros than I can actually look at very cleanly. I'd have to count them all too. I'm pretty sure it's a hundred million. Uh, that's nice. probably a real great shop too. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, too busy, too not, whatever you is or don't know, we hear excuses on this all the time. The point is it does have an actual cost, not just to the delight of the client, but obviously to the, the impact of the bottom line here. Chris and I, when we do some presentations, we do talk about client delighters. We're not going to go into the counter model today. Some of you have heard us talk about this enough times already, but it's kind of a bummer because what Chris is saying you put so much emphasis on so many other things to really attract and keep people happy. It's a bummer to lose out on that satisfaction because of a preventable thing, such as an oil change sticker. Or Sorry, can I point out one thing on yeah. that is not yeah. saying it. So, so actually having this process of quality control and actually telling your customer, Hey, we actually do this process of quality control actually is a delighter because uh, as we've seen in the poll, and we have great shops, that are a part of this webinar and took this poll, like how many shops in your area are not doing QC or are absolutely refuse to do QC, right? So actually, I believe it could be a delighter for your customer's sake that they go, wow, you guys actually take a couple extra minutes to look over my vehicle, make sure that the tools are removed, that it's wiped down, that the job was done properly. That actually becomes a delighter, Craig, in, in, yeah. in, a, in a world where it is not practiced and followed. Yeah. Uh, I was shocked, Chris, one day when uh, transmission shop, we did an overhaul on the vehicle and the customer's picking it up and they asked me, do you road test the vehicle after you're done? It's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it was like, of course, is, is my reaction to it. Like, but in their mind, they have no idea how we do things. Right whatsoever it's so obvious to me he's like yeah there's a whole transmission shift point relearn it takes like 30 minutes on it uh, blah blah they had no clue and i always forget that they have no clue now we talked lifetime value and i want to point this out when chris and and this is interesting to me because you started this quality control form way back i think this predates the dvi in autoflow correct or it was the early earliest form of of an inspection sheet that you guys used correct that's it so we, we developed it craig because everybody had inspection sheets but at the time nobody had any type of quality control sheet what people were doing were using inspection sheets yeah. as quality control we didn't want to do that because we didn't want to dirty the results of one thing for another so we went and created yes. our own quality control inspection sheet yes. yes and when you started doing where this statistic stuck for me in our conversations 70 percent of the vehicles you personally checked out when you implemented the quality control ch checklist had issues on them. Did it surprise you? Absolutely. I, it, here's one of the things that in our gut, Craig, we know, but it's one of those things you can't manage, manage what you can't measure. So if you're not measuring 
what your quality control is in your shop, it's happening. You just don't know. You have this gut feel, right? And, and you're like, ah, how many? And and yeah, Craig, when I went actually did it, spent a couple of days just looking at every vehicle over, you get even a sinking feeling. I don't have bad people. It has nothing uh, against your people in your shop. Everybody has the intention of doing a great job. The problem is we're focused on fixing the car and not necessarily focused on the potential things we create while fixing the vehicle. And that's the problem. We don't really have this. And now there are great techs out there and, and they don't want to mess up cars, but they just don't realize that they accidentally had a stepped in a puddle of grease. And mm -hmm. when they got out of the car, they just didn't realize that they scuffed up the side of the, the, the kickboard when they got out. They're just not looking for that because they're like, hey, I just did a $2,000 job or 23. I feel good about myself. I did it in record time. Everything looks good. They're just not concerned about some of those extra things. So that's what it really came down to. And what we're going to see, Craig, is when we look at my shop, yeah, we still have issues. What we've learned to do is celebrate the fact that we found those and the customer didn't, right? So in our monthly meetings, we go over the quality control. We go over, actually highlight the top ones, and we'll talk about the funny ones, or we'll talk about the interesting ones. It, 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 now, we also, if we see pattern failures happening over and over and over again, a oil change sticker not get put in the windshield, we can go approach that person and say, Craig, you're, you're not putting the oil change sticker in as much as you should. You did 10 oil changes. Five of them didn't go in. That means you had a 50% success rate versus, oh, Craig never puts the oil change sticker in. Now we know how many times he did it. We know how many times he didn't do it. We can specifically address the problem. Yeah, this is great. Right. So you're pulling this up. This it's, is straight out of Rowlett in December. So these are all very recent. So these are the action. These are the items at Golden Rule Rowlett that, your team is finding in the QC process now. And I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, we looked at this a little bit beforehand, but just for a moment, but 32 items on the, it looks like you have process items on here too. It isn't even just about whether the car yes. itself is perfect, but if certain elements of the procedure weren't done, work orders not being signed off, signed off, not submitted, uh, or yeah, it, it's, it's very common, 32 instances of that. And I noticed it over other months too. It seems like an area of focus. You wouldn't absolutely, know otherwise. Right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Making sure those work orders sign up. Now the quality control person goes and fixes it. Yes. But we have to still go to the technicians and say, look, hey, this this, this is what's happening here. And this needs to happen more. I really like this one, the big old Sasquatch boot uh, size prints on the carpet. That That's we gold. Use, <laughs> we, use, we use the protectors, right? We, we do. But every once in a while, that technician gets back in the car real quick and doesn't think about it. And it's, yeah, you can get mad at the technician, but once again, we're able to go and, and get the carpet cleaner real quick, remove that footprint, and the customer knows nonetheless, right? These are just things that happen because they're not top of mind, Craig. And that that's really what it boils down to. Technicians are there to fix cars. That's what is top of their mind. And they know they have 10 more cars lined up behind them. So they're not necessarily thinking about some of these subsequent or afterthought type things. No, I, I but love we this. still need to fix them. I love this point on the bottom here too. An oil life reset wasn't done. Uh, we've talked about this before. When that's not done, you know what the client's thinking in many cases is that, oh, if that light wasn't reset, the oil also wasn't changed. So you just took my car, took my money, but you never did anything to it. They don't know that that's something that's a separate procedure in many cases. So this one's devastating. As devastating sometimes is the oil change sticker not getting in place. Uh, in chat here, we also had Gerald Martin chimed in. Uh, and I'd be curious to, to I, I would love to have used an active client on QC as, and see how their forms look, but with active customer information on the screen, a little more challenging. But he says uh, it, the repairs, uh, you have to make sure repairs are completed as expected. This morning, they found that we had installed a new bad battery. Uh, yesterday. Thankfully, they caught it before the client picked it up. It tested worse than the failed one we took out. Oof. And I do this when I teach the class, Chris. You've seen this too. I ask the question to the room, have any of you ever had a client go pick up their car and it won't start? <laughs> every right, hand, almost every one of us. <laughs> the client is never, and this is, this is you know part of the whole process, right? And the understanding of the pain of the process a client never leaves your shop and walks back in three minutes later to say, high five. 
great job. Everybody's heart sinks when we see that customer who just got the keys walk back in five minutes later because you know, the service advisors know, oh crap, what did we Dude. not do? And how many times is it, uh, my car won't start, like you said, and, and you just spent all this money and oh my Lord. So we've all been in that position, Daryl Martin. I, 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 we all have stories after stories after stories and, and we didn't even touch the battery. Right? We didn't touch the starter. We didn't touch anything, but it was just in our care and the car doesn't start. And it's like, but at least we find it before the customer does. And we don't yeah. look culpable. Like we sabotage them. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I actually remember feeling a little bit mad when someone just came in to thank me for a great job. It's like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's such an unwelcome experience to have the customer walking back in after the initial, the final transaction. But here's the thing, folks, uh, on this topic, uh, we know there's problems. I think we've done a good job explaining a little bit of the why, and I think it's important that we started uh, with that in this conversation. Uh, if things are going wrong, it you know, you absolutely know there's not just one thing. It's not a one-off thing. The reason that report that we just showed you with Golden Rule uh, is so valuable is precisely because it shows you that it isn't just one time or just one thing. If you allow these things to keep your shop unchanged in their process. You get what I consider organizational creep. Uh, you've now tolerated a certain behavior and you're not sharing it, that it's an important element of the team to correct this stuff. You have to address it. And I, I think that there's some examples. And when I do the full version of this course, I use a few examples out of NASA and the QC process they went through. I talk about all the single point failure items they found on the, uh, that they had to check for on that new web telescope. And if any one of those things went wrong during that mission, would have we wouldn't be getting beautiful pictures um, out of that telescope. And I just saw new ones coming out today too. Uh, it's it's constant. And my favorite topic, aviation. Uh, as some of you know I, I absolutely love talking about aviation, aviation industry. Student pilot, my son, drone pilot now too himself. Aviation industry takes this very seriously, and we know there's a case in the news right now featuring Boeing yet again. Uh, in, in this. And I want to just highlight one thing. FAA, probably the best RAN government organization, uh, the stringent processes that they put in place, the authority to ground aircraft and other things, and then force closer inspections as soon as they become aware of even one instance of a problem. And you know what they uncovered with the most recent case, the Alaska Airlines door plug case, they found several other instances of loose bolts on those door plugs for planes configured exactly the same way. Now, why in an auto repair shop, if we had multiple, uh, one instance even of an issue, why would we ignore that and think, ah, that was a one-off thing? It's not going to happen. The aircraft industry doesn't have that luxury. And for, for several years, almost a full decade, they had zero deaths until a Southwest Airlines flight had a catastrophic engine failure. Uh, and a lady was partially sucked out one of the windows. I talk on that case study when I teach this class. Fun case study, by the way, because Southwest had another incident of that that didn't result in an injury or a death. They could have dug in further in that first instance, but they thought it was a fluke. Sad story. Uh, but yeah, Finn out. Yeah, this is. Uh, I did keep one slide from this. There was a really fascinating story. So someday if you get a chance to come and see me and Chris talk in the art of quality control, we do dive into a couple elements like that. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, the good news is, hey, that problem can't happen again. That seat is now the safest one in the airplane. I take it every time I fly and I do so confidently. And yes, I've even had my wife take that seat next to me uh, right there by the window. That was uh, one of the seats that was affected by that fin out issue. But hey, uh, you you have good quality control. You can solve things. Now, up front in the first part of the visit is one area we talk about. I've used this in our course as well. We talk about the catastrophic destruction that can occur if you do a bad job checking things at the front end of the visit, the inspection process. There's a great case study on this. We aren't going to go into all the details on it. You've heard me talk before about four corner walk arounds and capturing the precondition of that vehicle before you do anything else. We're not going to go into this. I want to go in tool under our QC here, but I'll tell you this saved my life in Phoenix one year when I got this rental car. I had Chan Patel, our VP of sales with me. It was 1130 at night at the budget rental car. I had delays during the day, got in. I just want to get to the hotel, go to sleep for our presentation in the morning. I had that car in reverse and I looked over at Chan and I said, oh, 
can. I didn't do my four corner walk around, put it back in park under the discipline to go around and do what I know is important to do. And I was thankful that someone had already chalked this gaping wound in the sidewall of this tire because the 105 degree heat in Phoenix, no thank you driving on the highways with that. We got a nice brand new Altima instead for the rental car as a result. Uh, you have to be disciplined and make sure the habit is there. Inspections, if you don't know the precondition of the vehicle beforehand, how do you know if it's a quality control thing in your shop when you're checking things out at the end? You just don't. You have to have the whole process in mind here. And the thing that I like to indicate on this, and this is New Year's st stuff, right? I, I started a new habit this year. I'm rucking for 45 minutes every single day outside in January every day, except so far today, that'll be later. <laughs> I have rucked and also 75 push-ups a day on top of this. Not easy in January, folks. I had to get ski goggles. <laughs> but it's a discipline now, and I actually look forward to it all the time. We got this way with our lookover process in the shop, unrelated to the QC sheet. Having someone checking over the work, it's, it's done at multiple layers inside of the visit. Now, that second set of eyes is one thing, but the core question that we're going to get before we jump in tool here is who is responsible for the final quality control check? It's really, really important question to ask. And I love, Chris, that when you did this, brand new in your shop, you paved the way yourself by being the guy who went and did the quality control. It also, it, not only leading by example in that, but you're also setting the bar where it needs to be set. And you're not leaving it up to someone who doesn't have the same stake, ownership, or interest in the shop. Is that what motivated this? Is, or was it just a simple, like, no one else is going to do it. I might as well. <laughs> Craig, you got to leave. So one of the slides that you, you showed was, you know, we tolerate it, w w the, the actions we tolerate become habits. It, and what we do is we tolerate in our shop. We know that we should do certain things. And then we're so busy. We let other things distract us and become priorities. And we're like, ah, eh, that isn't as important until that thing becomes important again. And then we become very reactive. And then we go and we yell at our guys and our girls and we say, do a better job, do better, right? And we don't really give them the guidelines to do better. So yeah, I took it upon myself to say, you know what, I, I try to get it in my shop, I try to get it done. I'm like, no, I'm gonna do it, right? This is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna market, I'm gonna make sure that I understand, I'm gonna create the process and walk through the process. Um, so absolutely, it was about tolerate, I was done tolerating this behavior and I knew I wanted to make it a habit, right? And I knew I wanted to make it consistent and I knew I wanted to, you know, build out a process. And so it was better that I did it. And then once I showed everybody the results, my question to the team was, is this who we are? Is this golden rule? Is this the law by which we live by, which is treating others the way we want to be treated? Can we do, it, can we really improve this process? The other thing, Craig, I want to talk about, and it's, it's you, you touched on this. It's about habits. It's about creating habits in your shop. There's another great book we talked and we'll talk about, you know, change or die. There's another really good book, Craig, that I, I'm, I'm mostly almost, almost through, and it's called Atomic Habits. Mm. And, and all habits, the power of habit, uh, change or die, atomic habits, it all talks about these, you know, cues and different things. I thought that in Atomic Habits, which was pretty interesting, was stacking. Habit stacking is what they call it, right? And, and you already have a habit of doing this. Just stack it on top of this other habit, and that's your cue, right? That's your... So, you know, with quality control, what could you stack, you know, to start this process with a process you already have, right? And kind of get it ingrained and then get it to where you're doing it every time, right? So I, I know in Change Your Diet, we talk about, you know, making sure that you're, 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 you're surrounding yourself with people, you know, the three R's, right? You're, you're relating to people who do it. So find shop owners that do it. You're repeating the habit and you're reframing the habit, right? And the mm -hmm. repeating is the important part. But I thought in this book, the important or the, the interesting thing was that that when you associate a habit with an already existing habit, it helps us know that trigger, right? That we can then uh, apply it over and over and over again. And I look at my life and I say, yeah, there are certain triggers um, that I have that I can stack on top of other ones. And a lot of times it, it helps create that that new habit. Um, yeah, so that's excellent. It's, but it's got to start with the owner, right? The owner has to be the person I think that has to lead and, and lead by example. And then once again, Craig, I always like to talk about this as owners. Are you the, you know, what's your role as an owner in, in the shop, right? Are you the one doing everything? Are you the one who's, who's a, it's the bowling alley analogy. 
you're the one holding the ball. Your people is, is your ball, right? The goal is to knock down the pins. Craig, if you just started bowling, or if you're not a very good bowler, chances are the first time you throw that ball, or 10 times you throw that ball, you're going to hit the gutter, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to be very frustrated. If you put up bumpers, then that ball is going to bounce multiple times, but eventually it's going to knock down a pin or two. Eventually it's going to knock down five or six. Eventually it's going to knock down 10. Your ball is going to get straighter. So having our KPIs, having our, and making sure we're reiterating to our people what the goal is, what our KPIs are, and making sure we're putting their faces over and over again is those bumpers. So we just got to make sure that we can't say, hey, we're going to do quality control, Craig, and I want you to do it every day. And I want you to fill out a checklist. What are you doing to follow up behind them and making sure that they are, that there's process in place, they're following it, and it's going to take you. Anything I know about leadership is it's going to take you 10 times, 15, 20 times, 30 times. It's going to take you 62 days before that habit is created, and people like to revert back to what they what they know. So they're going to immediately say, ah, oh, we're too busy. We can't do the QC. But that's when you have to step in and say no. We're doing it. Look, I just did it, and I found three more issues. This is who we are. This is what we got to do. I love so it. I know I went off tangent. No, things, this is right? good because where this is going, it, it is. I like that. And, and man, we should have said, get out of the gutter and do quality control. It'd be a good title. <laughs> Put up the bumpers. So quality control setup inside the tool. You'll see I'm in auto flow here. On the right side of my screen, I have my administrator menu. And I'm going to go to quality control setup. And I want to tie something in with what Chris said. I just had a great meeting with a new client this week. He has three stores up in Alaska. And he had his managers on a meeting with me. And we drafted together what they want on their quality control list. And it was an active and engaging conversation. But the owner in that meeting, said, this is what we're going to do. It was already a clear directive that went straight into this. There wasn't a question on there. It was just a matter of what items are on the quality control list now. And that's where the team started working together to define what criteria they must do. And there was some great stuff that came out of that. Some really fantastic insights from each of the store managers that went onto the sheet. So the ownership gives the direction, the clear commitment, holds people accountable to it. You can cultivate how this then works together once you're aligned in agreement on this. Quality control setup can also be built a variety of different ways in the tools. So we do accommodate many types of visits. And this is new for some of you that are that know we've talked about this before. We talked about this two years ago, one year, whatever. We can add multiple quality control sheets now for different types of visits. So my advice is go in here, add a new sheet, and build them out. You can start very, very simple. And I usually show this is how I start mine right here. And I'll tell you this right now, too, with both me and Chris here. I have my demo instance, which I train on, and I share the sheet with a lot of my clients. Chris has his sheet, which is a little bit different than the one I train on. We have the ability to export those files and upload them directly into your shop. Our emails are, should be available. You can talk to us here. If you want the sheet that either of us are using, guys, we'll hand them over. And you can then make them your own, tweak them to your heart's content. But it's a great starting point. You don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time. I see you, Alyssa. We will. <clears throat> and uh, this Craig, is I, I, I do want to address. So, so you did say who's the most important person in the shop to do this. I don't think I yes. addressed it. And I see a little chat on the, on the, so, so let, let me, let me start here. I believe in incremental change, right? I believe in plus one, plus one, plus one. If you do small one degree change over time, it becomes a major change, right? And I think that's where we get caught up in change. Like we're like, now we got to do plus 10 immediately. I used to say the best person in the shop, 100% is your service advisor. Um, that's what I like it. My shop, my service advisors mm -hmm. to do the quality control. And the reason why I personally like it in my shop is because those are the ones who feel the pain of the customer coming back in through the door and yes. saying, hey, is this your tool or is this your rag or, hey, my car's not starting? They feel the most pain. Technicians don't feel as much pain. But I, I, you know, I used to be like, nah, I don't think technicians could do it. But you know what? I, my mind has been changed over time because people have told me, well, hold on. Technicians actually know the work that was supposed to be done. So their second set of eyes on a vehicle sometimes is 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 very important by catching things that may or may not have been done. So I think you, and then some people have a QC person. If you want to hire a QC person, absolutely. Just make sure that there is a, like you're talking about, Craig, a process and a checklist. And, and whoever that person is, they understand the importance and the why behind why it's important. If you hire a QC person, 
Make sure they're just not clicking boxes just to click boxes because it's their job. Make sure they understand that it is Craig's vehicle and it is our job as, like you said, service professionals. I, I'm surprised you had thrown out the quote from Bob Greenwood. I'm sure you will. But it's your job to make sure that vehicle gets back in better shape than it came in and that it's safe and that it's and and so you really need to burn this into the brain of whoever is doing this process whoever you yes. designate needs to understand the importance of why they're doing this right yeah and having a process and procedure for you to go back and check against is part of that measuring and managing yeah I like to think of the QC as that final element of making sure that things have happened too. So uh, I love Bart and Gerald are, are having a nice dialogue on that second set of eyes concept. We use the second set of eyes because transmission specialty shop, we are ripping into cars in, in deep, deep ways. The subframes out on almost every vehicle and every lift. The engine's removed on some vehicles. There are so many things touched. That procedural accuracy of the repair, yes, it is the responsibility of the person whose hands are on the car, but your hands have been on the car. Your eyes have been on the car. You get pulled off of that car and onto the car. Having that second set of eyes has saved us on so many occasions. We've, we've required, before you put the subframe back in at key phases of a transmission install, you had, look over, you call for it. Whoever can get to a good stopping point comes over. They got their flashlight and it's game on he knows that vehicle too he's done the procedure himself and he's looking for the things that we know have failed uh or we have failed on before little clips little fasteners here and there uh sometimes electrical connectors are caught those things are miserable to have to take care of later on after you've already buttoned the whole car back up we save ourselves so much time by having that second set of eyes come in there from a helpful second hand uh so don't get tied up too much in that concept though Think about the final quality control sheet. If you start trying to get technical procedures onto these sheets, you're going to paralyze yourself. I've done this. I thought, all right, we're going to make a quality control checklist for every, I don't know, 4L60E install that we do. And we're going to make sure that all these things, no, no, you need to keep it generic. I love on Chris's example, we saw earlier, there's this other item and people put the other notes in that for procedural stuff if you need to. This has to stay real simple. And you'll notice I do have procedural items on my sheet. Ticket items, all estimated, right? Work order submitted, those sort of things. If you struck that out of there, we just have final road test, main concerns addressed, fluids full, leak free, codes, air pressure, wheel torque, and cleanliness of the vehicle. You can do this with five items. And I like what Chris said, and I fully agree. Service advisor who's coming face-to-face -face with the client, start your QC process with just this. Make sure the car's in a deliverable state. You don't need to know the whole procedure technically to do that. You can just know that it's clean. It starts. <laughs> There's not a lake underneath it of the wrong color stuff. <laughs> and it, it is a solid, solid beginning. And you will find things that if you hadn't found, the client would, and you would have been embarrassed. I promise you're going to find things. Week one, you will find things. Unless you're and, and Craig, <laughs> and Craig, it's and, and you're once again one degree. If you just like you said, start with a five point checklist and you check the minimum. This is the way humans work, right? Once you create the habit, you will you will and your, your your five items will turn into six items, and then somebody will go, well, we really don't have this, and they'll turn into seven items. And yeah. then somebody will say, well, we really should be doing this as well as this. At first, they're probably going to say, no, absolutely not. But then once they get the habit, right, that's where we reframe that habit. And once everybody has buy-in, then it will get better and it will increase and it will change, yeah, right? It's a because different now they're all on board. It's a different kind of organizational creep. The other direction. Yes. You're, yes, you're continually yes, refining those elements. Yep. It, that's exactly what you do by starting small. You just add something here and there, here and there, here and there, because your team will be dialed in at this point. It's like, oh, I keep finding this other item. This is like the 15th time this month. I think we need a line item for it. And that's exactly what will happen is now you have that. And then it's measured even better than before. Beautiful. Now let's take a look at this because functionally, I think there's some, some really great elements to this that I love. Now, you all know about the yes, no addressed column in the DVI. The yes, no addressed column is to keep you honest in the quality control here too. It has nothing to do with approvals. 
on this piece. Well, what happens when you find something wrong? Let's just move through this, this here inside of my demo instance, and we'll say we found a leak um, or maybe transmission fluid was low. That's a, that was a big one, folks. I mean, I can't even tell you how often as a transmission overhaul specialist, you have to check it multiple times after the road test, different temperatures, transmission fluid being low can be devastating to that overhaul though. I've seen them two quarts low coming back from the road test. Uh, absolutely insane. Uh, and that will cause burnups of the most painful variety. <laughs> and let's say it was Lee, the technician who did it. So we found that two quarts low on Lee's install of that transmission. I marked it red. What I'm not going to do is add the fluid to it and then mark it green because I got it. I fixed it. No, leave that thing marked red. Mark it as addressed. I fixed it, but I'm leaving it marked red because... The quality control report is not here to show a green checklist. It's here to show that our quality control process is catching things. You see the difference? I'm not sharing this with the client most of the time. Yes, the sheet is shareable with the client through a service advisor log, and you can text and email the client. I'd be really, I would be should have asked this, Chris. Are any of you sharing these with the client, especially if you mark something red? I, I would be... I'd be shocked. I don't. I keep this internal. Uh, and if you do need to show a client that you're doing these things, uh, that is one argument I can make for having a green checklist. <laughs> but I would say if you're doing that, you can have two sheets, right? So do two quality control forms, have the client facing one, say what you need to say. There's a, there's your fix for this. those, those of you who wish to share. Uh, now, the notes are also important because if you don't make the notes, it won't show up in that cool report that we just saw with Chris, and I'll show you again here in a second. Uh, any of these items, torque, air pressure, big one for you tire stores, I know it is, and wheel torque is the scary one that keeps you up at night, I know it is. Torque sticks, no, no, in my shop, we had to use torque wrenches on every everything. Uh, guys, there's video and images or two. If you wanted to get so detailed that you want to see these, submitted with pictures or proof of some form or a video for Pete's sake of the technician doing that check, you can do that. Um, and I think that's very valuable and it doesn't take very long. So please consider some of those things too, but we'll mark those good. And I'm going to submit this report and it doesn't matter who is doing this. I'm logged in in this particular case as a service advisor. Oh, notice uh, some of these requirements for mileage, by the way. You might have got it in to the shop, but you can't get it out on the QC process unless you go and grab that odometer. That's kind of a cool feature. Some of you are probably thinking, yes. <laughs> and some of you that are uh, service advisors on these cold days and the technician didn't even give that to you before he parked that car. Oh, it's the worst. Now you got to go out there. <laughs> we'll hit submit and watch what I can do now. So we were honest. We checked green things. We did all that. And if there's a non-applicable element Yes, we have an NA button on the QC sheet. No, you can't have it in the DVI. <laughs> but this is where I go next. I want to go into the quality control report. The report is where the fun is because after a week, after a month of doing this, you're going to want to come into this. You're going to see a simple count of how many quality control sheets, how many issues, images and videos or any marking is also in this report, very similar to the DVI. But where we go is this in-depth report. And you pick any date range you want. I don't know how many I've done in my demo store recently. We've done four things. So let's do view in-depth report. And you can pick the sheet that you're looking at. So my final quality control looks like there's my one instance of my transmission fluid, two quarts low by Lee, documented right there. And of course, from this, we're going to take this report. We're going to have a team meeting. And we're going to just crucify Lee on this. No, <laughs> No, Chris, when you do this with your team, if you have notes and someone's the culprit, how does that conversation go? What we do is the monthly meeting, we go over the issues. So I have a, a spreadsheet. We download a couple of different QC things we, we check, right? We're there, so it's not just the QC. We QC a couple of different processes and we have KPIs. We have our, our benchmarks that we want to stay under or over. And in this particular case, for our quality control in these issues, we want to stay under 10%. If we stay under 10%, we celebrate it. I also go over this weekly with my managers to see if something's going out of, out of control. But if we stay under 10%, I, I highlight a couple of the things that we found as, wow, I'm really glad we found the and we cleaned the big Sasquatch footprint off the customer's car. 
<laughs> um, it doesn't get addressed to an individual unless we once again see pattern failures. And the nice thing about this is you can, depending on how you set it up, you can start seeing the pattern failures. But you can see, so there's another birth to death audit that happens, Craig, where we go through, like you have some of the things on your QC sheet, you know, was everything written up, was everything, so initials and some other things get put into this sheet. So in our QC sheet, a lot of these things might not be missing and people are like, how do you know who it is? There's another layer of auditing that happens in my shop. Uh, so so that's, so don't One think of these the days information we need to do is that the death. It is there. Uh, the 100% death we need to do it. Yeah, that, that's that. a yeah. great conversation. Summarize very quickly. Now, I think you're using the workflow report at a glance uh, for that too, right? When you're doing the There's a couple of different projects, products we, we do. And I have to give Cecil Bullard credit for this. He was the yeah. first one who I ever saw do this birth to death. And 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 ever since then I saw it, I'm like, oh, I gotta I gotta do this. Yes. But we use a couple different right. reports to create this birth to death report, right? Yes. That's brilliant. So take a look here. Like this is the workflow report, not the QC report, folks. The workflow reports, oh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, because you can actually once you've learned the color system inside of Autoflow, as some of you certainly, certainly know it by now, orange means that the sheet was completed. So which tickets here had quality control completed in the last seven days? You can see very clearly certain tickets didn't. And of course, we can see the service writer and the technicians who are on that as well. It, you'll be login based, of course. So it won't, won't all say admin on yours, I hope. <laughs> but you this, got it, Greg. Is, this is gold. Uh, and this also shows you the status changes as well. So you can do a quick spot check on a birth to death type of a format in this screen. And then if you see stuff missing or wrong, you can start asking some more clear questions. Why? Like, all right, Lee uh, and admin, <laughs> why didn't we get a cute work order signed off or the quality control sheet signed off here? And for the ones that do have completed quality controls, or maybe even this, folks, look. The DVI is not being viewed by customers. This workflow report at a glance gives you a color indicator on this too. So you that gut feel you have on the views might not be accurate. We've got completed ones that weren't even sent. Here's a sent one that wasn't viewed. And here's a whole bunch of tickets that I demoed in my demo instance that didn't even get a DVI. Shameful. <laughs> but the QC report, Chris, I noticed something. And I think this is a question that we should answer. Do you name the culprit or do you leave it anonymous and maybe only go so far as saying Sasquatch? And let's be clear, I bet they know who that so, is. <laughs> so so, so that's, that's exactly right, Craig. You'll see that it is for the most part anonymous, right? Because it, so, and this is, everybody can be different in their practice, right? Sure. Celebrate in public, correct in private, right? So you want to, and this is just my philosophy as a leader, Yep. If I have a problem with you, I need to correct you in private, not in front of everybody. Now, some people are like, no, the way to teach them a lesson is to correct them in public. Mm -hmm. um, for me, my leadership styles, I want to celebrate somebody in public and, hey, the team, we were under 10%. If I see pattern mm -hmm. failures based off of the work order report, birth to death, then I pull Tony aside and say, hey, Tony, we're seeing this thing happening. Is there a problem? What's going on? Explain to me why we're not following our process or procedure. And then Tony has the opportunity to go, I've been pulled off on 37 jobs, right? And I just haven't been paying attention. Well, okay, Tony, we need you to pay attention. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to pay attention? Uh, I'm going to make sure I complete the job, right? And and typically when you bring it top of mind to the person, that amazing, it, it, get fi it gets fixed, right? Yeah. And when the person gets pointed out, we say, these are how many times it happened, Tony. We need to make sure it's not happening anymore, yeah. right? It's not, oh, you know, you're always doing it or you're never doing it. It's like, no, we, we see that it last five times out of 10, you've had it right. done it and it's becoming a problem. Right. And and so you've, you've actually, I like your perspective on this. I think I, I'm going to probably change my, the way I demo this a little bit. I like to put the name in there just to, to highlight the ability to do so if you did want to do it that way and you could see it. But I think you're right. If you're doing team meetings on this and you're using this report, you wouldn't want that. And you don't need to name them here, folks, because inside of the main sheet of the quality control based on the date, we know who signed off, who the service writer was for that ticket. Uh, and of course, in other areas too, I don't think we're showing the technician view in here, Chris. Uh, but yeah, the uh, we do have, of course, we know the technician that's been on those tickets. So if you're seeing issues, you can sort this. Yeah, up the, very the work order, the work order report, as you showed, which shows a holistic yep. view of what was completed and the different yeah. pieces of parts. We know who who they are yep. on on the ticket. So if you found something that is right, like oh boy, 
Yeah, that's tough. And obviously, if you saw there's three issues on this one here for this CRV, uh, we can get a link straight to this report. We're going to know who is on this. We're going to know the issues. Keep track of that stuff. And you probably will want to have a conversation with someone who's a frequent flyer on some of these points. You don't want to have that door plug falling off more than once. Uh-uh. <laughs> Man, that story was was something too. That the fact that there was even a kid in the seat next to the the seat affected on that flight was was alarming enough. But the fact that that seat was actually empty was merciful. I can't believe that. Oh, would have been a scary flight. Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. And Craig, it's something. It, it, and that, I mean, once again, you bring a good. I, I just you know here we are, twenty twenty four. Everybody's making goals. For their shops and, and all this and you know we're 2024 hey include quality control i just like all the pain of what happens when you don't have that bolt in the ikea furniture that you just bought because somebody said hey i trust that it's okay like we need to understand like from a client or customer perspective ourselves like we rue the day when this happens to us right and we curse and we we, we get upset we have the ability, and this is great, as shop owners, as service advisors, as technicians, like we have the ability to, to, to do something this simple to yeah. change the course of our customer experience. Craig, did we catch them all? No. There are things that slip by this process, but do we catch a good majority of them? Absolutely. And do we know that the majority of our customers are happy with the quality of work that we do? Absolutely. And it keeps them coming back again and again and again. It is an important thing that is overlooked in this industry and unfortunately overlooked in a lot of industries oh, that yeah. should actually adopt this process. Yep. And you're, you're bringing up airplanes and you're bringing up the percentage of, yeah, it does happen, but all the quality control on the seatbelts and everything else that they do prevented that, that catastrophe, you know, from happening to where if they're like, eh, we don't need to worry about the seat belts and what kind of pressure they can hold on somebody in a seat or that seat itself, what kind of pressure it could take before it flies out of the airplane. Like there's so many things that they also so want to control on that vehicle. Yeah. yeah. That's why I love that, the that aviation this one. Yeah. You yeah, saw that. It is that, a good example. You saw that incident in Japan. There was a runway incursion for that flight that had landed, got hit by, oh my gosh, miracle. Yeah, two planes. Yeah. Miracle yeah. that everyone on the airliner got off okay. But you know why? The planes that didn't have everyone get off okay, they studied it. They studied it and they fixed it and they fixed it. And they literally designed these things in such a way that they know how long or how, the fastest way possible you can evacuate that many people. And the, the flight attendants are trained and it's just absolutely astonishing that everything went as well as it did. But that that victory in this particular incident was earned on the backs of all of the other failures we took the time to learn from and apply the lessons. And that's why we are going to take the time to do quality control now so that we actually take the time to learn the lesson so that the future ones don't have the same issue. It's the most powerful example I see on a routine basis. Uh, Craig, it was change or die had the example of the airplanes that came back from World War II and the ones that didn't. Right. Oh, and oh so the, I think it was that in, change or die? Is that in there. I think there's we a, bring this into that conversation, but I don't think that's in the book, but I know the case that you're talking about the aircraft. Yeah, it, it was, it, it's a, it's a study on statistics, uh, very specifically where the airplanes coming back, they needed to assess them and how to make sure like they're armored appropriately. So looking, all right, the planes are getting shot up all these spots, right? So we're going to fix up these spots. But then the guy is looking at, I forget his name offhand, but he's looking at it's like, no, these are the airplanes that made it back. What we need to be doing is looking at the spots that aren't shot <laughs> on these airplanes. Extra armor on the engines and other control service areas, obviously, is the result. But the statistics can be misleading. And so the point that Chris is making, I think where this ties in really neat, Chris, is that the people coming back to your shop, if they had issues, I mean, that's that's one thing. It's the ones that are not coming back at all that you don't get to see. And if you're not doing these checks, you're not going to know. Uh, but no, I love that point. Here's another administrator uh, factor that I like to consider too. So let's go back into quality control setup one more time. 
is this has evolved. Some of you, again, if you haven't uh, noticed, there's this required option. I didn't highlight that too much earlier, but if there's something that you don't want to allow this quality control sheet to be submitted without data in it, that means a green or red or not applicable marking, then you can require that. Simple click of a button and that item is now required on the other screen. You saw how that looked. There's a little red asterisk right next to those line items. And if I tried to submit that sheet without one of those clicked, it won't allow me to submit it. Uh, just be careful. Requirements, as you've heard me talk before, if you have a lot of requirements and a technician just wants to come through and get this done, they just hit it green. Watch out for that. The one thing we cannot do for you is ensure that these are being done as diligently as they should be. Uh, so some scrutiny. If you start to see that, all right, yeah, 100% of my tickets had quality control. And if every one of them is green, and folks, I've seen it. I have absolutely seen this exact scenario. Uh, if you're that perfect, I need to go to your shop and see what your team is doing uh, because that is unheard of. I know for a fact none of us are perfect. So if your sheets all say they're perfect, they're not doing it. <laughs> or you need to read it. I've had to address this in my shop when new people come in and they're not used to this process, right? And and part of it is the fear of hurting somebody's feelings. Sure. And that's what it really boils. There's fear in, I don't want to piss off my technicians. And I think, once again, as a leader, you have to really say, hey, it's not about pissing off technicians. Like, we are humans. We make mistakes, period. Right, it's not about hurting people's feelings. It needs to be once again not shied upon, not frowned upon, not looked down upon. It needs to be, in a in a sense, celebrated. But not you don't want to celebrate like yeah we suck, like we're doing all this stuff wrong. But it needs to be like hey we caught this and the customer didn't, and it's okay like that we do catch this right. It's not a a you know because uh, I, I once again new people I know they come in and it's all green and I'm like well was it because i just saw you wiping down the car oh oh i did but then i checked it green like to your point earlier no 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 yes. market is that and the market is addressed yeah and it's okay we're not going to beat people up over this we just want to know that extreme honesty there unless it's happening every car then it's time to have a hard conversation no this is good so one of the the final things I like to talk on this to start simple. We already mentioned this uh, statistic wise. These is these are old statistics now. I can't remember Chris when we added these. We talked about this before. Uh, how long should this take though? Is a key question that I get routinely. Uh, five to ten minutes is what you were seeing. Is that still probably it's still pretty valid? Yes, this valid. is all yep. still very very valid. By be skewed by a minute or two break is all very valid. Yep, very nice. Yeah, grease on handle. That looks like uh, still still the thing we keep catching. Yeah, very good. Uh, fluid's not full, all that. That's great. That's great. So folks, uh, the common issues, we know what they are. I would start with those things. Uh, listen, uh, we have the resources. I saw a few of you in chat. Uh, pop us an email, uh, please. And that way we won't forget to uh, give you the file. Let me know. If you want Chris's quality control, mine, both, I have them all on file. You can actually just hit me directly if you want it fast, uh, and I'll happily share those things. So, yes, this webinar will be available uh, for download and viewing later. Uh, we do a post-recording uh, uh, touch-up on it. We don't edit our words very much, <laughs> but we definitely do put that up on our channel on YouTube as well. So keep an eye out. We do send an email to our attendee list and we'll make sure you get that. I, I hope my goal for all of you, if you will join me, is that this is the year that we see the quality control component in the tool really take off in usage. I'm going to tell you right now, it breaks my heart a little bit that I've talked on this over the years. It still hasn't surged in activity. DVIs, my gosh, we're talking millions now of the DVIs performed inside of Autoflow. The quality control sheets are still a fraction of all of that. And I don't think that should be the case. I think you're all good enough. And I think we can really, really set a difference in this industry with some more, more attention to that. But join me, please, please, I beg you. It's in the tool already for you if you're using the DVIs. <laughs> it's just waiting. 
Chris, any final remarks you want to add for new habits? Yeah, Corey, Corey put this comment in earlier. He's like, man, yeah, like drive throughs are the worst, right? Because you always get, you <laughs> know, a good example. there's something always like missing in your bag. Don't be a drive through right? Take a couple extra minutes and be the best shop you can be. Make the choice. Be intentional about what you're doing. And this, this, this is just one way, Craig, that a shop can just increase their quality and performance. By it, it doesn't really take a whole lot just to add a plus one to your shop. And I promise you, I, I guarantee you, if you personally do this for a couple of days, you'll be shocked. And then you'll also see that, hey, this is something that can plus one us. And we probably all have turned away some customers you're never going to hear about. And guarantee you're going to increase your level of customer satisfaction plus 10, plus 10, easily plus 10. Be warned. Once you start finding the things too, then you definitely can't ignore it anymore. <laughs> no burying your head in the snow here. Or I appreciate the you you invite me, Craig. It's been a oh, while. Oh no, this was the conversation ripe for for one of the things that we discussed, and I think this was the right one to talk about at the beginning of the year. Uh, this is the time for changes to get implemented. Let's do it, folks. Uh, please, uh, again, reach out to us if you have questions. As far as the new habit piece goes, uh, I also want you guys to uh, consider. Hey. Let's go, let's go ruck. Chris, I can't wait to see you in Dallas next week. We're going for a ruck, folks. And I think we need to start a ruck club, Chris. I think we should call it auto ruck me. <laughs> I have my ruck set, Craig. I've only done I'm it. Just be honest. I've only rucked twice this year. So I am not, I have not created the ruck habit like you have. Yet. Oh, we're gonna we're but gonna I'll get there. We're gonna I'll get there. Oh, you're already doing the soccer stuff all the time too. So I imagine you're going to be able to rock a little faster than me, I think, out of the gate. <laughs> I can't wait though. This is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, oh, cool to see that, that uh, Corey. There's, uh, I think that they're, yeah, like-minded men, fellowship and faith. Oh, that sounds amazing. They do it in Grand Rapids. I am going to call you, sir. I'm going to call you. Thank you so much. Everyone, have a great day. Have a great 2024. Enjoy the quality inspections and quality control inspections as well. We'll see you guys soon.